I've been working as a full-time software engineer for over nine years. In the last year, I started a journey to create a game part-time around my day job, and I'm documenting it here on YouTube. There's a common question amongst the indie dev community, and that is, can you pursue game dev as a part-time hobby? Well, given that's what I'm doing, I thought I'd record a few days in my life, unfiltered and as honest as I can make it. So let's see. A typical weekday revolves around my day job. My real productive hours are in the morning, so I try to start as close to 5 a.m. as I can, but it varies. Every good day starts the same, before coffee, no social media, no news. I just wake up and get to work on my project. It's as ridiculously simple as it is hard. Every mediocre day will typically break one of these rules. Coffee before work, social media before leaving bed. This Friday was a bit unique for me given that I had to consider videoing my routine. I lost quite a bit of time to setting up the camera, attempting to record an intro that I didn't even use, and messing around with my settings. But at least I did learn some things about the camera in the process. This morning, I started working on adding some details to my game's building system. I wanted to add block counts along with some arrows to highlight the size of each axis when the player is building. I started working on this but quickly realised that the arrows don't offer much benefit to the player at all. It's really just the block counts that provide useful information. I spent some time implementing the arrows at this point, but began removing them. As a solo developer, it's important to be incredibly lean with the features that you add. There's little benefit in spending time adding things that won't be a major benefit to the player. In the process of adding these arrows, there was a stage where I had two static lines at the default 00 position forming a crosshair on the screen. I found this to be a nice visual aid for the player, so I implemented it as a permanent feature and added block counts for each axis, though at this point I ran out of time so I just left them at the default position. Which didn't look very good, but I'll come back to that later. At this point in the morning, I'll usually get some coffee, get some breakfast, and read. Often, I like to read before I start working, but it depends on the day. I never used to read, but in the past couple of years, I started forcing myself. I found it's a great way to immerse yourself with inspiration, and when you're dragging yourself out of bed every day at 5am, and not really talking to anyone, reading serves as a great guide. It helps you to see the bigger picture and gets your brain thinking. It's become a real staple in my routine. After this, my dog Willis is usually wanting some attention. This morning we went for our usual walk down to the nearby lake before starting work. We don't do this every morning, sometimes it's lunch, sometimes it's in the evening. It really depends on the schedule. But morning walks are always the best. I think he agrees. At this point I begin my work day. I typically work around 8 hours but it varies. For my day job, I work currently as a consultant specialising in DevOps. So my main focus is on automation and the practice of delivering software fast and reliably at scale. There's much more to it than just this and I could talk about it for hours, but for the sake of this video, I'll skip over that. After my workday, I usually try to take a break from my computer. I've typically spent around 10 plus hours on my computer at this point, and it's one of the big drawbacks of having a hobby and profession that both revolve around sitting on a computer. On this day, I made dinner for myself and took some time to relax and catch up on YouTube and podcasts. I would usually spend some time with my partner at this point, maybe catch up and watch a film, but my partner's away at this point, so it's just me and Willis. On a typical day, at around 8pm, I would go and do something physical, like a workout, indoor rock climbing, or play some golf at a driving range. I'm not necessarily good at any of these things, but it's a really important part of my day, given that I sit down for so long, and I enjoy doing these sorts of activities. On this evening though, I was feeling quite tired and I didn't feel like doing much and as it was a Friday and I had no one to hold me accountable for not going to exercise, I had a nice evening in and just played games instead. If I do any more work on my game in the evening, it's usually to finish up a feature I started earlier in the day or set myself up for the next morning. In this case, I did return to the office to clock in around one hour of game dev just to tie up some loose ends. We continue now on Sunday. I had every intention of also recording my Saturday, but I had a pretty bad headache, so I slept for a good portion of the day and rested. This is probably because I skipped physically exercising Friday night and instead spent more time on my computer playing games and overstraining my eyes, so it's entirely self-inflicted. On a day where I don't have to work my day job, my routine is vastly different. It starts out much the same, but a little later. I wake up around 7am, read and have my coffee. Then I get to work. Working at this point could either mean working on my game or making a video for this channel. On this day, it was my game. Regardless, it'll start early and I'll work usually uninterrupted until midday, which is around the natural point where my brain starts to strain and I feel natural creativity is beginning to slow down. 
At this point, I try not to force anything. I stop working wherever I am and I go out and enjoy the daylight. I like this schedule a lot. It feels natural. I've always wondered why we work during the hours of the day where the sun is shining and naturally you want to be outside and being active. I much prefer to work in the morning and in the evenings when I naturally want to be inside. Interestingly, famous writer Ernest Hemingway followed a similar routine. In a 1958 interview with the Paris Review, he said, You write until you come to a place where you still have your juice and know what will happen next and you stop and try to live through until the next day when you hit it again. You have started at 6 in the morning, say, and you may go on until noon or be free before that. He goes on to say, Nothing can hurt you, nothing can happen, nothing means anything until the next day when you do it again. It is the wait until the next day that is hard to get through. The first thing I did this morning was improve the appearance of the block count text that I'd added on Friday. I changed the font size and the spacing and made it so that it would appear on the left or right hand side of the cursor depending on which direction you were building in. Then I got to work on fixing some annoying bugs with the building system. Previously, you could zoom out as far as you wanted, but the building placement would break completely after a certain point. To fix this, I limited the zoom and increased the area at which you could place blocks. Next was a problem that had been plaguing me for some time now, and that was fixing camera rotations. This was something that I'd added a while back, but it had been broken since I rebuilt the building system. I knew this was going to be a pain, so I'd been putting it off for a while. This morning, I decided to fix this. So you can now rotate the camera around a certain point and building will work as intended. The rotations are quite a critical part of being able to build something, so it was important that I fix this before I move on. Then I also took some time to fix the top-down building. This was also broken, and this is a really useful feature for when you're laying out floor plans and trying to decorate the interior of buildings. So it was also important that I fix this. These features might not look like much in terms of content, but they took quite a long time to get working right. So this pretty much consumed my entire morning, and it was around noon at this point, and it was time for me to get some time away from the computer. I'll typically spend my afternoon doing whatever I feel like. Usually it's spending time with my partner, seeing family, friends, or going for a hike. On this day, I made some brunch and then went for a walk with my dog. When I got back, I drank coffee and read. Then I went to play golf at the driving range. I'm not good at golf, I don't really play it either. I just started going to the driving range recently and I found it pretty fun to just get 100 balls and just whack them into the abyss. When I returned home, I played some games and ordered some food. I don't usually get takeaway, but I was just eating for one and I didn't feel much like cooking. If I'm trying to be super productive, I'll sacrifice some time in the afternoon to work more on my projects instead of doing other things. But as I'm a part-time game developer, my weekend is mostly about conserving my physical and mental health for the week ahead, as much as it is about having free time to just work on my game. In the early evening, feeling fairly refreshed, I decided to get in a couple of additional hours to work on my game. I spent this time working on improving the building selector. So previously, you could scale this manually using the scroll wheel, but to reset the size, you had to manually scroll it back down, which was quite annoying. So I added a single key reset function for this. Now you just hit space and it resets the size. I also wasn't a fan of how you had to scale this by holding down a key and then using the scroll wheel to scroll it on the different axes. So instead of doing this, I made it so that you could shift right click and then drag your mouse to scale the highlight indicator. This means that in a couple of swift movements, you can scale the selector and then quickly place the blocks. It's quite efficient when you get used to it. And this is where I left it for the evening. It was around 9pm and it was time to wind down before eventually going to bed. 
Now I did consider filming more days for this, but I thought, what's the point? I think it makes more sense to just close it here. Any other days I would record would mostly be the same, it would be gradual progress and the routine mostly wouldn't change. If you're watching this because you're looking for inspiration, or you're just curious, or maybe you're looking for a different way to balance your work, just know I've been doing this for years now, on and off. Generally, any time I have a busy period in my life where I'm working on a passion project alongside my main job, I will follow a similar schedule, even before my game. There's no secret productivity hack here, there's no magic, it's just the simple act of waking up and getting straight to work on that thing that's important to you, and doing this consistently. In the morning, your brain is pure, your thoughts are unmanipulated. Harness this time and use it well. I didn't make this to give advice, but I've kind of gone on a tangent here, so I'll stick with it. On the off chance that you're watching this because you're looking to start your own project, I'll leave you with this. 